stocks bleeding. You won't believe what Michael Burry just predicted for 2023. Stock investors are well aware of who Michael Burry is. He was the guy who successfully predicted the crash of the stock market in 2008. In this video, we will discuss his predictions for 2023. But before we go into his predictions for the stock market in 2023, I would like to request you to subscribe to this channel. Subscription is an excellent way of supporting our channel, and I really appreciate all the support you can send our way. A big thank you in advance for that. Michael Burry in 2021 predicted a massive increase in inflation, and we did experience a rapid increase in inflation in June of the same year. The same thing happened to cryptocurrency, which had been experiencing quite a boom for the past couple years. In September 2022, he predicted a great deal of recession in the white-collar sector of the tech industry. We are going through the same trend. There have been enormous layoffs throughout the tech sector. For the year of 2023, Michael Burry has made another startling prediction, which if turned out accurate, would essentially shake the stock market to its very core. So what is in store for us in the future? Let's see what Michael Burry has to say. So what did Michael Burry predict in the year of 2023? Essentially, he predicted that the current wave of inflation will be the first of many and that after we ride out this wave of inflation, we will have a second wave of inflation spike. This will happen, according to Michael Burry, because the government, or the Federal Reserve in this case, does not want to keep the interest rates high. Keeping the interest rates high may trigger a recession, but it will also be instrumental in ending the never-ending cycle of inflation. The reason why this prediction is so debilitating is because the exact same scenario happened in the 1970s. But will we see a repeat of the 1970s? Or are conditions today completely different from the 70s? But let's just backtrack for a moment and take stock of what's going on. In the past few years, the U.S. economy has been crippled with supply chain issues as well as excessive money printing or inflation. When both of these issues combine, we see an exponential increase in inflation to the degree it was never seen in the past 40 years. The Federal Reserve has responded to this situation by intervening in the business life cycle of many financial companies and raising the interest rates. Raising the interest rates essentially puts a brake on spending and stops the economy from growing. This also means increased financial pressure on everyone. This boils down to making an impossible choice. Should we just let inflation go unchecked and make everything unaffordable or just increase interest rates, which will eventually help set the interest rates? History tells us that raising the interest rates is probably the smarter thing to do. As a result, the Federal Reserve rose interest rates from 0% to 4.5%. But does increasing the interest rate help with the problems and is it a permanent fix? What has happened with increasing interest rates? One thing that the Federal Reserve was hoping to happen did happen, and that is the inflation is finally trending down. But this also means that the people are spending more money on mortgages and loans right now. If this continues to happen, they will not have enough money to spend on other things. This means that the government will ultimately be pressured to bring the interest rates down since keeping them up would essentially destroy the economy. Lower interest rates makes people happy and it increases the overall spending. Combined with the fact that the chair of the Federal Reserve is actually nominated by the president means that lower interest rates will also be on the cards since politicians want to make the people happy. The problem with lowering interest rates is that, if you do it too soon, the problem of inflation will continue to raise its ugly head again. This means that we will have to restart the process all over again. In the 1970s, we had a similar problem. Inflation rose by more than 5%, and the interest rate was increased to over 9%. This resulted in a lowering of inflation to 3%, and the Federal Reserve lowered the interest rates too. 
But this lowering of interest rates was too premature since the inflation exponential increased to 11% by 1974, and the interest rates were again raised to 13% to deal with inflation. The Federal Reserve was very confident that this will result in a lowering of inflation. They were right too, but they again lowered the interest rates too quickly due to which the inflation shot back up to 14% in 1980. This time, the interest rates were increased to 20% and the U.S. had to enter a recession to combat inflation. There is a lesson here. You cannot lower the interest rates earlier than usual. But have we learned this lesson? But wait, maybe Michael Burry is wrong this time. The reason Michael Burry's prediction is so terrifying is that, well, first, he's not wrong too many times, and second, many other economists and investors have predicted similar things. Another well-known investor, Charlie Munger, has said the same thing. All of us are hoping that we do not enter a phase in which we enter a recession, but from the way the economy is being run at the moment, it certainly seems like a possibility. But there is also some hope. We can hope that today's politicians may have learned a thing or two from the recession and the economic pangs of the 1980s. To be fair, it's not that the current Federal Reserve is completely unaware of the cycle between the increasing interest rates and inflation. Jerome Powell, the current chair of the Federal Reserve, has explicitly said in many of his press conferences that the whole Federal Reserve is committed to not repeating the mistakes from the past. He was quoted as saying that the ongoing increases in the interest rates are appropriate for returning the inflation to 2% over time. This high inflation will erode families' purchasing power, but they are committed to staying the path until the issue is dealt with. Premature loosening of interest rates would derail the chances of dealing with the issues on a long-term basis. But the Federal Reserve is saying this right now. Is there a guarantee that the Feds will follow through with this commitment? Now, as discussed earlier, politicians actually follow the will of the people. And if the people want lower interest rates, they are under pressure to deliver. It is still feared that the government can actually go back on its policy to win people over to its side during the next election cycle. But will that happen remains to be seen. What do you think? Do you think the Federal Reserve will remain committed to staying the course? Feel free to comment down below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Catch you in the next video, and until then, take care!